Hello, my darling dragon friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ariel. I am the Sassy Dragon, and today we are going to be smelling and reviewing the fragrance brand new Juliet has a gun, and this is um, their newest fragrance, which is simply called Juliet. Um, they have been going, I don't know how long this perfume company has been around, maybe about 10 years, maybe a little longer. Um, and they are, you know, they've got some real hits and misses for me. Some of their fragrances I really enjoy, some of them, eh, not so much. This one is interesting. Um, I was really hoping for something a little bit more from it, but let's go ahead and smell it and spray it um, and, and see. I'm just going to reiterate my thoughts. <laughs> to myself about this one. This one was just released. This is the brand of Romano Ricci. He was Nina Ricci's great grandson. She is, you know, a long time. She was an old classic perfumer from way back. And um, so this is his company. And they've had a, a number of releases, but this one is supposed to have cherry, um, is on the top. They call it a sour cherry. And the marketing and the pictures around this look very, very bold, right? They they make you think this is going to be like a real showstopper of a fragrance, and I definitely did not find it to be that. Um, they say that there's cherry on the top, guys. I am not smelling it. And I have a really good nose for this stuff. So it is so subtle that if it's in there, it, is, it may be a tiny bit. But it is definitely not making its presence known to my nose very strongly at all. Cherry has been a note that's been in a lot of fragrances lately. We've, we've reviewed um, Yves Saint Laurent. The new Black Opium has a cherry scent in it, which to me is just basically Black Opium with a very strong cherry on the top added. Um, but very nice if you like, you know, Black Opium already and you like the addition of the cherry. Really works nicely. Um... Tom Ford has a variety of cherry fragrances that I have yet to review, but they're very, very popular. I have smelled some really nice uh, samples of those. Definitely a fragrance. You know, they, they are very, very pricey, but if you're like a real diehard cherry lover, they would be perfect for you um, and probably really worth the, the investment. Um, Kaoli, the Love Fest Burning Cherry is a great one. It has some Palo Santo wood in it, so it's it's a nice cherry fragrance. This one says it has it, but it does not come out very strongly to me, guys. And I have, you know, I usually don't read reviews from other people before I do my reviews because I don't want to be unduly influenced, but a lot of people have said the same thing. They're like, where's the cherry, you know? And they're right. <laughs> they're right. This, this one should be called, uh, not lost cherry, but absolutely maybe completely missing cherry. <laughs> this note that I do smell very strongly up at the top of this, the second top note in the list is pink pepper. And it definitely has the pink pepper. And I love pink pepper, but it needs to have other things underneath it. Pepper has become very popular as well in a lot of our newer releases. They, there's been a lot of fragrances lately with pepper notes in them. And I really do like it. Like, that's actually nice. I, I don't mind the pepper at all. The middle note is really the strongest part of this fragrance, and it comes out almost as strongly as you would expect the top note to, which is the jasmine. Um, I wouldn't say there's anything uh, particularly um, unique or different or unlikable about the jasmine in this fragrance. It's quite nice. Nice. It's not anything that makes me go, "Wow, that's an amazing jasmine scent," or that's, or even, or even to say, "Oh, that's a really stinky jasmine scent." You know, because jasmine can be a little pungent. But it's not doing either of those. It's just a very nice, safe, not very bold jasmine. It's just a very reined in, you know, smooth one. And in the base note, we have cashmere on and tonka bean. Um, Normally I would expect the tonka bean to bring a little bit more sweetness, a little bit, you know, that kind of slightly resiny, warm, almost vanilla sweetness, but it's not bringing that. The base notes don't seem very heavy or substantial in this fragrance blend. Um, if the cherry is in here, it's blended so well and in such a small amount that I don't really catch it. 
And, you know, it's possible that it could be the kind of cherry note that is not what we typically think of as a cherry. I always think cherry is either going to be a more sweet syrupy cherry or it's going to be a more like tart fresh fruit um more like a, sh a cherry without the sugar added you know what i'm saying and um this one i'm not getting either one so it's really hard for me almost to believe that they added it there um i saw in some of the other fragrance note blends that there were berries in this um, but I'm not seeing that at all. I think that people's reaction to this is probably kind of like mine. There's nothing wrong with this perfume. It's super safe. Like if you wanted to just have something kind of inoffensive around the office or just, you know, where, you know, just kind of that sort of scent. It's definitely not in line with the marketing that was behind this. It doesn't, it's not bold. It's not memorable. It's not particularly that interesting. Uh, they, they say it's a symbol of untamed femininity. Powerful, free, passionate. I'm like, where? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is definitely not that kind of, re uh, of fragrance to me. I think, unfortunately, this one is hitting audiences and, and, and scent lovers the same way because um, on the Fragrantica site, which I will post a link directly to the page that reviews this, um, they show how fragrances are trending, which is a very interesting thing. It's almost like a graph chart where they show, you know, how it's going. And so this one, literally when it came out, it went way up and it came back down <laughs> because I think people have smelled it or are getting samples of it like I have. And they're kind of like, oh, <laughs> I did kind of get my hopes up when I first saw this because the, um, the full size bottle comes in this very beautiful red bottle you know, it almost makes you think, you know, with just giving it the name Juliet by itself, that this would be their brand's almost like a signature scent that would be really, really extra special. And unfortunately, it's really kind of boring. It's There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not what I would consider to be in line with that. And I've got nothing wrong, nothing against, you know, more boring, more safe fragrances. Sometimes we need those kind of things that are not as um, punchy or bold, for sure. Um, a fragrance that I reviewed, um, was it earlier this year or sometime last year? Yeah, it was last year, um, that I consider to be kind of a boring scent is the new Mugler Angel Elixir. Um, I got it. I used up my little bottle. And I, it actually strangely grew on me. I know people that hate the new stuff from Mugler, and I'm kind of a little bit in that camp too. But it actually ended up growing on me, even though I don't think of it as an exciting fragrance. It definitely has nothing to do with the original Angel. I think they should have just marketed this as something entirely different with a whole different bottle and everything if they wanted to do it. But it's a nice, boring scent. And I tell you, I get so many compliments on this, it's out of control. So it's, it's a nice, boring fragrance. If you want like <laughs> a jasmine, you know, vanilla, that's kind of like a little bit more safe, not really particularly special. It has the pepper in it, which I do love. Um, but I like something like that way more than I like this. This one just, it's got the pepper, it's got the jasmine, but it doesn't really have a whole lot else going around, going on in it. If the cherry or the berry notes were a little bit stronger, more voluptuous, more, you know, juicy and authentic, maybe if they add turned up the heat a little bit more on the cashmere or, or cashmere on or the tonka bean, you know, it, it might have been a little bit more bold, a little less safe. I probably would have liked it a little more, right? So that is my take on this one. Tell me what you think. Um, tell me what your favorite fragrances from Juliet Has a Gun are, uh, because I'm always open to doing reviews on any of them that you would like to see in the future. So guys, have a wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by and spending time with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.